what can be my session? This is a efficient kernel bank porting. Um, Alex Shi uh, work on the LSK linear stable kernel for three years. Uh, during last three years, we have five versions of linear stable kernel. This is 310, 314, 318, 341, and 44 kernel. We bank ported 10 features into LSK. Um, those kernels were widely used on many different products. This includes some of Google Nexus. And in today's session, I'm going to talk about something, uh, maybe very thing that's covered, kernel feature bank porting. This includes um, why we do feature bank porting, and, and then uh, before bank porting, what kind of preparation we needed and then go to the feature organization, uh, which is the best way to organize your bank porting feature. And the most difficult things during the bank porting that is uh, conflict. How to conflict with a proper, with a proper solution? After bank porting finished, uh, you still have a couple of things that need to be done. And uh, finally, we may talk a little about the expectations on the upstream. Um, why we do bank porting and uh, why we use the old LTS? Mm. In current computer world, kernel development is, uh, is kind of full, interesting, and challenging. And many people fight in the upstream. But uh, in the product field, lots of distributors and mobile devices, vendors, often ship us a kind of old kernel, uh, which probably, probably based on one or long-term support, support kernel. Um, AKA this is LTS. So why to get a steady LTS instead of our latest and fancy upstream kernels? Um, they are due to a couple of reasons and as I list here. Um, the first one, um, upstream kernel always hides some bugs so the Best stable kernel is kind of uh, is kind of LTS kernel. So uh, for a product product kernel, then should that's that's what treat as a system baseline, and for out kernel patches and the system compa compatibility. Um, so the last request should be on. Um, less regression testing required. Um, those, those are all required, all target on a steady LTS instead of upstream kernel. Um, if the uh, product manager want a uh, LTS kernel, so they are often still, still couple the latest feature missed in LTS. So, um, like some of latest drivers, functions, or security updates. Here are some examples in the LSK we do the bank porting. Like um, the ARM uh, PCIe support on the LSK. 4.1 and 3.18. Uh, another is a C group write bank. Also the hibernation on the ARM64. Um, 
not only about the, the latest upstream feature, there are also some of the um, downstream feature that is de designed for the ARM Big Little. Uh, that is EAS and uh, HP, HMP. So, is there any, is there other solutions? Um, if we don't, if we don't like this bank porting, um, actually, the recently there are lots of argument in the kernel submit um, email email thread. Then there is a lot of upstream guys insist uh, we need to do the upstream first in the product. Um, then this is not very. Then this is a kind of not true, uh, because lots of lots of features and actually it isn't stable. In a product, it, it needs much more time to get steady. And, uh, the upstream kernel is not very very stable, and uh, if you do this kind of the upstream first in product, maybe you need to keep rebasing your kernel follow the upstream. This will cause another problem. Is if you have lots of kernel API changes, um, it, it maybe include driver API proxies, but also some more important uh, system management interface change like C group V2. Um, so if, if you keep regret rebasing in your product, this will cause a lot of regression testing because the kernel changed a lot, the interface changed a lot. So um, not only the kernel part, but also some of the system level software that rely on many kernel APIs. Both of them will need a full testing. Then uh, it's kind of uh, unbearable for the mobile product. So. Uh, current solution is um, use the LTS plus some of the feature bank porting. This is used widely uh, in the industry. Not only the mobile devices, but also many distributors, including some enterprise distributors. Um, here, our example is LSK. LSK used um, by many mobile devices vendor. Uh, so, is that a perfect solution? Um, the truly answer is, um, is, is no. Um, there is a lot of redundant work and repeated work for the already enabled feature. Um, the, that's engineers keep this um, repeated work. Um, the second is um, because the feature already enabled in the upstream, so. Um, if you bank port it to your to LTS, that's your loss. That's your loss. Loss of review or testing from community. And, uh, um, the third one is um, when you do the bank porting, uh, you often get troubles with some new APIs. That's maybe you your feature used in the upstream kernel. Also, there are also um, lots of kernel components are coupled closely. So uh, when you do the pen-porting, you need to do a clear decision on the coupled kernel component. So. Uh, when we're talking about the bank porting, um, so I if we have to make this decision, although it's not uh, very perfect, but uh, it's, it is commonly common used widely in the industry. Um, so the first, the first preparation step is how to choose the best feature candidate. Um, usually, there are some good resources to know the feature request. This is um, the requester give you a request um, 
who should know a lot about this feature. Um, at least, um, w what are these feature for? And uh, um, why he want to use his feature, this feature? Um, another resource you can choose uh, to get online, and uh, lots of information usually you can get from um, lwn.net, or you can search for wiki to see the detailed feature profile. So um, during the feature development, there are usually a lot of versions that goes to upstream or sent to the LK, LKML. Um, the first target and always um, be the last one, which is modding to upstream. But um, sometimes the old, old feature version is may be acceptable if it uses the old kernel API and without a functional or um, bug enhancement. So uh, after you decide your feature version, uh, you need to collect the candidate commits. Usually, um, you can get direct feature band set from LKML. For other related commits, a good way is uh, to check the kernel source tree. Uh, here is uh, three ways to collect related commits in Git tree. The first one is um, you can choose from the related kernel source file and the heads. Um, here example is um, git log um, v1 dot upstream. And uh, um, after two dash, there is, um, there is a directory of the source file. So um, you can get all the uh, candidate commits after this command. So um, another way is um, you can you can chase this commit by the feature name. So uh, like the following two commands, git log dash i, uh, dash, dash g, or um, dash dash grip. You can search the consent. Um, like uh, which commit mentioned the, the name of Kassan. So uh, there's still another way, that is, um, you know uh, who is the, the author of, the, of that feature. And uh, um, so you can search by the author name to see if um, any other left feature commits that haven't mentioned like uh, Kassan or mentioned something uh, that's maybe out of the source file. So um, anyway, you can use all, all of those three kind of way and to, to collect the, as small well as the possible commits you need to bank port. feature organization. When you do the bank porting, maybe there are lots of features you need to do the bank port, and maybe some of them may couple each other. So um, you best need a good organization. Um, the best ruler for this uh, is um, each of feature should be isolated in a separate branch. So. Um, that would make your branch um, much more clear. Um, the opposite solution is you mix everything together, but uh, that is a really disaster if something's wrong and you need to retread maybe all of the commits and find it's difficult to debug or fix. There are 
as I just mentioned, there are still uh, lots of features may be uh, coupled with each other or may be uh, dependent the others. Um, so for some dependency, the feature dependency, um, the best way is um, you use you use uh, you use the, uh, another branch which is based on the coupled features, not based on the main line. So the benefit for them, um, the first one is uh, feature selectable. Also, because all of feature uh, should be a separated branch, so you can choose um, any of the features you want and uh, to um, drop any of them you, you dislike. And another way is um, if you have a tree mode branch, it's clearly it's easy to read, retrieve, or debug. Uh, here example for the feature organization. Um, we can see the LSK41 uh, then see the release on the February um, in the 2016, that's this year. And uh, LSK is released monthly, so the next version is um, March version in the 2016. So we can see um, on, the, uh, on the top of the line, the LTS. LTS uh, will be moved into LSK by weekly. And uh, under the line, under the middle line, there are two features. This is um, FOOA and FOOB. So here example show um, FOOA was um, di directly based on the LTS. And the FOOB is have some dependency on FOA, so it's based on FOA, not the LTS. You can see um, both of them are moved into LSK, like a tree model. Um, Bank porting with Git. Uh, Currently, the, I guess most of the open source repository is based on Git. So I just use Git uh, as an example. Um, here, uh, we can see how to do the bank porting. The best command, the best call command is a uh, cherry pick, git cherry pick, dash s, dash x. And uh, here example is uh, commit one dot dot commit two. This means um, to cherry pick a punch set, which is the range from uh, commit one to commit two. Um, another way you can do the punch porting also by the cherry pick, but uh, choice is a punch one by one. Um, if you bank port commit one by one, it's uh, easy to control for every commit. But um, actually, I would like to show the first one to do the bank porting by the range. So you need to get all commit at once. And then maybe um, keep disturbed by some dependency missing. This means you need to care more about the dependency and lots of uh, rework for your, for your bank porting. But the good thing is, um, by that way, you you can make sure all the dependencies commit with a uh, correct sequence. So that's good for for your for your final work and to check to show the clearly the dependency sequence. Um, so during the bank porting, the most work and the key issue is uh, to deal with conflict. The main reason of conflict happens is there are some of middle changes missed. 
between our base kernel and uh, our target feature. So here I give uh, three typos for the changed miss conflict. The first one is the direct code base change. Like um, some remove line in your patch that doesn't exist. That was changed by some commit. So um, for this type of, you can use the command git log does does h does s or does g followed by the change string. Um, you can see uh, which commit do this change and uh, to look into the commit log to decide if this commit you want or that's need uh, does need to drop. The second type of for the conflict is um, there may be some dependency missing. Um, like um, some new code line added into uh, your code area. And for, 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 this, for this conflict type of, um, you can find the changes by the git blame or by the git log dash p. And uh, um, the usual solution, uh, the usual result is uh, you need to pick up the dependency. Um, the last one is um, actually is the most difficult one. Uh, your bank part feature coupled with some other kernel component. Uh, like when I, when I doing the bank porting, when I doing the bank porting on EAS, um, lots of scheduler features coupled with a new mass scheduler. That's, that's very close and it's uh, hard to figure out all, all the commit. So it's become difficult since um, the scheduler part also coupled with um, kernel memory. So if you want to do the bank porting with all the dependencies, that's almost you need er everything. So the the better the better way is um, you better cut off earlier for the couple component kernel component. Like um, on the ARM architecture, we didn't need the new mass scheduler, so you can cut off from there and then you don't need to go to the kernel memory change. Um, so um, that is my suggestion for the feature coupled. There are some tools can be used for the confliction. Um, Maybe the kernel I I I E that's that's the kernel uh, git command can to reuse the conflict solution. That's your straight name. And uh, the second tools um, are usually used um, to, to find the commit that triggered conflict. Um, actually, I. Uh, Actually, I also mentioned that is um, the git log or git blame. Uh, git log has um, lots of parameters that's used to find out um, maybe everything in your in the patch. So here, example, example here is um, git log dash g to find out the um, that string in the task put and in the um, inet time weight socket. And another example is um, you can to blend all the all the source file. So you know every line the history. The history of every line. Uh, so, how to reduce the conflict? Uh, usually, the natural bank porting sequence is uh, to direct bank port the target feature commit 
then you will find much of missed uh, commit need to refill. The missed commits often are a dependency, a dependency, dependency chain. Then uh, make, make lots of conflict to resolve. So um, if we can list most of the possible commit from your base kernel to the uh, target feature, and then pick up the um, in that direction. That could reduce much of the conflict. So um, the trick is um, you need to know all the related commits. Um, actually, I in introduced some, some way to find out the um, commits before. Like um, you get everything about the related commit by um, source or by else or by the related stream. So, um, um, like there is a pen set in the middle, middle place. You may just need one of them for the dependency. So, um, to avoid the conflict in this code section, so you need to apply them all. Um, it's better. Uh, feature IOTS conflict. Actually, the I guess the most uh, tricky f conflict I met. This is um, a real example happened in when I when I bumped the C group. Like you can see um, on the upstream kernel for one, um, it's for more a bug fix F1, and uh, the some of the block and memory change, um, which is based before the for one kernel. So when both of them merge into upstream, there are conflict need to resolve. And uh, at the same time, the C group feature also cause some conflict conflict when merging into upstream. So after everything, after every conflict resolved in 42 kernel, and then it's keep finding some bugs fix F2, F3 uh, in the same code area for C group feature. So um, the common way to resolve this conflict um, is um, we do the pen porting direct based on the LTS. Here we can see the the middle line is the LTS line. This is a um, four one kernel and four one four one X, um, and then goes to the last one is four one eighteen. So um, bug fix mix bug fix um, pick up in the middle of the LTS. But when we do the bank porting, the last LTS version is uh, 418. So the euro way is to bank porting the C group right bank feature, um, A, B, C. This means um, every, every C group right bank commits need to do this, need to do the conflict solution. Um, so, um, if you do uh, if you do every conflict solution for a every commit, then this will make you the bug porting looks very ugly and uh, the difficulty to retrieve all bugs. And uh, what I use, and I think it's is a better way, is um, we can directly bank port it to the C group right bank. Thus, we can see the commit A, commit B, then see the same as upstream. So um, you can back everything to the first for one kernel. And then the bug fix actually goes to the middle of the LTS, the bug fix F123. So um, finally, the 
conflict, the conflict still need to resolve. Uh, but uh, by this way, you just need to do the to resolve the conflict and the last merge. So you just fix all the conflict in one merge. Um, so let's make let's make the your bank portings more clear and uh, uh, trustful. Uh, don't do. Actually, when do the bank porting, there is maybe some kind of taboo. Um, then it's very bad for the product, pro product stabilization. Um, like, if you kernel um, do some changes on the kernel API, maybe it's kernel, or kernel user level, or maybe it's internal kernel. So if the internal kernel API change, like maybe some driver API changes, this will, this will cause downstream drivers. Um, actually, there is a real example about the kernel API change. I, in this case, I changed everything. I changed, I mean, um, every kernel driver, the API is also changed according to, to fit the new one. But um, one of our members report there are lots of downstream drivers still use the old API. That's called troubles. Um, the not only the internal API, but also some the kernel user level API. Um, like um, Sys, SysFS or ProcFS. Another example on this is the C group. When the C group V1 change to C group V2, um, there is a big software that is named lib C group, which cannot use the C group V2. So um, in the middle of the, the don't do ruler, that is um, don't pick out big coupled kernel, kernel components. Um, as I just example of the EAS uh, bank porting, um, the new mass scheduler should be cut off earlier. Or you, you go, or you find that it's a long way to do the all bank porting. Um, after you finish your bank porting, uh, finally, um, so uh, there are some way you can do the review of the bank port feature commit um, to compare it with the, the upstream kernel. Um, the git log dash dash cherry is uh, used for TOFs um, to check this change. Um, like uh, this example, you, you can compare the unchanged commit with the up, upstream, um, you can see um, which commit is picked and uh, which one is not in in your bank ported kernel. But uh, this command is kind of just used for unchanged commit. So if there are some conflict solution in your in your commit, uh, this command will omit it and show us uh, it doesn't pick up. Um, so you still need some manual tools to do the to do the commit comparison. Oh. Um, the, um, not only uh, you need to check all the commit, but also you you still need some testing for your features. Um, for the common kernel, um, you still need to do the. Euro, the Euro testing, like uh, LTP testing, like a uh, build and boot testing to see if um, any bad impact introduced for your kernel. Uh, for the specific feature, you can seek the specific, specific testing method from community. 
uh, probably those kind of testing method also published by the author uh, to the LKML. LKML. Um, so if unluckily you, you didn't find the detailed the testing method, uh, you also can send an email directly to the original author to ask how to do the special testing. Um, well, as we know, the upstream kernel, they, not, they may have a uh, couple of bugs on the newly intri introduced features. So that's the reason we don't like, that is one of the reasons we don't like the upstream kernel. So when you finish your bank porting, that's the same problem may come to you. That is a lot of new bugs fixed in the upstream kernel. Um, so we need to keep tracking the upstream and to see if um, any other bugs fixed. And then you need to pick up to, the, to your base kernel. Um, I also have a script that can do the automation checking to list all of the uh, bug fixed commit. Um, So you, you can try you can try the script and to see. Yeah, any question? Okay, we we, we go to next. Um, sometimes um, I keep talking the kernel API kernel API should not be changed, but sometimes. Um, some of the feature, how to change some APIs. And maybe that is uh, intended. So um, if you do that, uh, you, you'd better notice all of users um, before some surprise happening. Um, like I introduced <laughs> the case of the driver API changes. Um, maybe some of the requests from one of our members that is intended to um, want the new API, but maybe other members don't want that. So if that happens, um, you need to um, tell them what's happening and what change, and also give the solution uh, how to fit the new changes. That is necessary. Um, expansion to upstream. Um, actually, there are recently there are lots of argument about the upstream force on the feature and also the upstream um, upstream force on the product. Um, I think um, the actually things is um, is nearly no one no any product you are using upstream kernel. Uh, so if we want if we want some requirement or, s or some expect expectations for the upstream kernel, um, then see we want um, a force one always stable. And um, the second is uh, should be goes to the IP API changes. So the less API change, um, the better. And the API changes um, may, they, they have some of the standardization about the kernel API. Like uh, usually the system call, we have a standard POSIX, POSIX standard. But for others recently, um, like a C group, DAM, and uh, memory, memory FD. Those things are always a widely used kernel API. Um, that's not standardized well. So in the open source community, there are some, uh, there are some requirement on this standardization, but uh, because there are still much of argument on the stand. So this field is still need to improvement. Um, the, 
Uh, another thing about the API is um, actually um, the C group V2 is a kind of a good example here uh, because when it was introduced, the C group V1 is uh, mostly was kept. So um, if you some of the system level software are use C group V1, um, mostly it's still, it's still usable. So. Um, collaboration on bank porting. Actually, there are there are uh, Linux Foundation projects that's named LTSI, um, which is used for bank porting. Um, and we can check the LTSI. The I guess um, if my memory right, the latest kernel version is uh, still 4.3. So um, it much, um, the LSK is do much better than LTSI. And we do uh, more bank portings. We use more latest LT LTS. But anyway, it's kind of collaboration. It's difficult uh, in the open source since a lot of the some of the uh, very aggressive upstream guys <laughs> is keep insist to do the upstream in product. Um, so um, that is all. So um, what I introduced today is um, um, we recovered we recovered from the bank porting preparation and. Uh, the feature organization, and then we uh, talk about the conflict solution. And uh, after you bank porting, uh, what you need to do? Um, and uh, uh, finally, the acceptation for the upstream. So this is all um, in my topic. So. Um, any questions for the bank porting? Hi. So one of the things in the later slides you were talking about was um, issues around standard APIs with the mainline kernel. And it made it seem almost like there were issues with regressions that you were seeing between the APIs upstream. Is that actually the case? or? Sorry, or maybe I misunderstood the point. Sorry, what are your, what are your question about? Uh, so I guess what the, the, the point you had about MMFD and DRM not being kind of a standard POSIX API. API? Positive API? What do you mean? I, <laughs> I guess maybe I'm just confused, I'm sorry. POSIX, not positive? Oh, POSIX, POSIX API. Um, yes, uh, POSIX is widely used, the uh, standard. And uh, since it, is, um, it has a long history, and uh, it's, uh, this kind of API is very stable. But uh, some others, like C group or the, we can check. What are these? Stabilization. Oh, here. Uh, like DRM or the memory FD, there are lots of argument on this. Um, this new API is, is kind of new. So mm. if, uh, if this new API uh, can also be s s standardized like the POSIX, so that would help a lot for the user level application. So uh, then if you, you upgrade your kernel, the software, software uh, user level software don't need to change much. OK, I guess I'm, I'm not confused because with the new interfaces, usually those shouldn't affect old applications because they're kind of parallel new interfaces, right? I mean, are, are, is there a way that these newer interfaces are causing problems for existing applications? 
uh, your question is, is about uh, the new APIs shouldn't um, have a bad impact on the on the upstream kernel. Is that right? Um, yeah. So I mean, if you're moving to a newer kernel with an old application, there's a fairly good promise that the kernel has that the old APIs won't break. And I was th these examples make it seem like they're problematic, but I, I'm not. Are, are they actually problematic? Um, actually, when we talk about the product, usually it's not only the kernel. Um, it also includes also the system level software. So um, when I talk in the um, here, when we talk about the mobile uh, industry, the product usually shipped into market may be just a few, mo few months. So in those few months, if you need to change everything, like uh, your kernel, your user level uh, applications, that's very difficult. And you can see in the mobile industry, um, lots of user level APIs is uh, developed by others. Is, um, as a vendor, you cannot control everything, and it's impossible to upgrade all the user level APIs with the new. Uh, yes, you cannot upgrade all the softwares with new API. That is difficult. Okay. Okay, thanks. Is there any more question? Can you wait a minute? Uh, you mentioned the uh, you solve many conflict yes. when you find uh, conflict to backporting to all the ideas. And uh, as far as I know, in LTSI community, when they found the conflict, when backport to some LTS, LTS division, H in uh, LTS, APS. Uh, uh, LTS division, some, uh, uh, when, uh, when uh, the community member of LTSI find the conflict, when backport to upstream kernel to some revision of LTS kernel. In that time, uh, community member of LTSI uh, intend to solve, uh, to contribute their result uh, into upstream uh, kernel uh, as uh, to solve uh, conflict when backport, uh, even it's the uh, contributing, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, how can I say, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, some, some member of LTSI is uh, contributing uh, to upstream kernel uh, to, 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 to modify uh, latest feature, uh, not to conflict on when it backport to LTS revision. Do you have intent to those uh, contribution activity? Uh, your question is: uh, Some of the members has a contribution to resolve the LTS uh, conflict or mm. maybe LTS bugs um, to backport upstream. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I guess is maybe uh, maybe related with um, this slide um, feature LTS conflict. Um, of course, um, if we find some bugs in the LTS, we usually we um, we we don't do the direct bank port. We don't uh, introduce the spark fix in our LSK. Uh, uh, on the con um, actually, we we often um, to introduce the spark fix to LTS first, and then we multi bank uh, to LSK. Oh. 
then see the uh, bug fix on LTS. Mm -hmm. And uh, the conflictions, um, usually the, the bank port feature is, uh, is set on the upstream force, so this conflict um, it won't happen on the LTS. Mm. Um, my example here is um, the LTS has uh, picked up lots of the bug fix from upstream. We can hear uh, there are some bug fix F1, F2, F3. That was, uh, that was introduced to LTS 4X. Actually, this bug fix um, is also, is also uh, or modified by, by the contributor. Those, those bug fix is not uh, exactly the same as the upstream commit. So they do some, already do some changes for LTS. So um, is that okay for my answer? No, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. So uh, we, the time is, is up. So um, is there any questions? The last questions? Uh, okay, if no more questions, we are done.